Well, hello there, my most amazing artist. Here is what we worked on last week. It is our Charlotte Trounce Jungle. Um, we used a variety of materials. We used a variety of colors. We used a variety of plants. We drew a variety of plants. And if you didn't finish this last week, that is a-okay. We will get this done either this week or next week. But more importantly, this week, we are going to work on an animal to go into our project. So, our final project will look something like this. You'll have your jungle in the background, and you're going to have an animal that you're going to glue down today. So, let's talk about that. Today, you're going to start off with a little bitty sheet of paper, just like that. And you will have a Sharpie. You will have a glue stick and some scissors. And you will also have a couple of these papers that have animals on them. Artists trace all of the time. So that's why I have these. You can take your paper and put it right on top. And I know it's hard to see, but you can see that animal right through. And if you're having trouble seeing your animal, you can take these to the window. And if you put it up on the window, it's easier to see. You can also just draw your own animal. You don't have to draw mine. This paper is not quite big enough. If you want to do the giraffe, I may have to give you a little bit bigger of a sheet of paper. You might just look at these animals and draw, but I do want you to draw big on this paper because it's an itty bitty sheet of paper and we need to draw big. If I draw a little bitty animal here, it's not gonna show up in my jungle. So let me speed this up, show you how I'm gonna trace, cut out, glue down, and then we'll color. So either trace your animal with a thick Sharpie or you can draw your own. I have the books over on the windowsill and they have lots of animals that you can choose from or bugs, you decide. Then you're gonna cut out your animal. Leave a little bit of white space so you don't cut off the black line. All right, now I'm gonna throw my garbage away. And then I'm going to place my animal that is cut out somewhere in my picture. Um, I might try to cover up something that I feel like I messed up. I'm going to kind of turn my paper and look for the best possible placement for my animal. I really like mine right here, but you might want yours somewhere different. When I decide where I'm going to place my animal, I'm going to flip my animal over. You want to put glue on the back of your animal, not on your big paper. So glue the back of your animal. Hold on. Go around the edge, up on the tail or the legs. Okay, so I'm gonna put glue on my animal and then I'm going to glue my animal in my spot that I have chosen. Be sure that your animal does not go off the page, okay? And then really take your time. Sometimes it helps to flip over your paper and really massage where that animal is, that will make him stick very good. I want you to think about coloring your animal either realistically or imaginatively. So I may make a pink and purple lion. I don't know. I may want him to really stand out. Um, animals are a lot of times meant to camouflage. So if you think about the colors of your animal, if it's realistic, it may camouflage in. However, if you color it imaginatively, it may pop out. All right, guys, so now that we have everything glued down, we are gonna paint our animal with these watercolor paints. When you paint, you need to wet your brush and wake up your watercolor paint. So let's say I'm gonna use these three colors right here to paint my lion. So I'm gonna wake up my colors and then I'm going to paint. Now next week, we will be able to use markers or Sharpies or oil pastels on top of the dry paint, and we can also finish the background. So if you have not finished your background, that will be okay, because next week we'll finish those. All right, I'm just gonna paint my lion. And then I can add some paint to my background if I wanted to. Oh, bled a little bit. That's okay. Now you notice I didn't paint my lion pink and purple. I did end up painting it more realistically, but it's your call. I want you to do what you wanna do. Next week, we'll add details. So I'm just painting solid color right now. And next week we will add details. Notice I am washing out my brush between colors. I'm gonna give him a little fancy feet in the end of his tail. So wash out your paintbrush in between colors. And then like I said, if you want to add any paint to what you did last week, you could, but there's no need to add a ton. Next week, we'll finish these up. So we won't play on the carpet this week because we are going to use our time drawing our animal and cutting our animal out. 
If there's anything that you want to use the paint for, you could do that this week. We probably won't have the paint out next week. So go ahead and use your paint this week. Next week we'll have the original supplies out that we had out the first week so we can add details to our animal, add any more details here to our background, and then we'll finish these up next week. Have fun. After you cut out your animal and glue it down, you will need to get a water bucket to use with your paint. They are on the windowsill. So don't forget, get your own water. When class is over, you will need to clean the water bucket out and replace it with new water and put it back on the windowsill. When your art is complete, you will need to place it on the drying rack. Take a look at this picture. You'll notice that there is one piece on the, or actually two pieces along the back of the drying rack and two pieces on the front, making a total of four pieces on each rack. Please work together to get this right. Look at the way the paper is turned. It needs to be turned in a landscape orientation or side to side, and then we can fit four pieces. That is very, very, very important, and everyone needs to do their part to make sure that we can get the art on the drying rack this way. Thank you guys, and have a great art class.